Hey everyone, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you guys another episode of Music with Friends. I know the last episode I did was literally in March, but we're here. It's time for episode two, and today is a special episode, Dad Edition. It's Dulcet Sounds with Dad. Yes, creative name, I know. Today is a special edition with my father. You guys might have seen him in the vlog that I did when we went college road tripping because he was in a few clips, but here he is. I've talked about him a little bit on my channel. He's been a big influence in me for music, so I thought this would be a fun thing to do with him. I've made it so that it's specific questions for him, so it's a little bit different. It's not going to be the questions that I ask Max. It's going to be like dad edition ones. Some of the same, but some also different. Still, same rules apply. It's still going to be seven questions, and I'm going to ask him about music. And yeah, hopefully some of my older fans might be able to relate. He's wearing a Dead Kennedy shirt that I bought him, so yeah. But other than that, here Lovely. we go. <laughs> okay, the first question, question one. Who is your favorite artist or band and how did you get into them? I think my favorite band is Husker Du. Uh, how I got into them? Somewhere in the mid 80s, maybe 84, 85. Uh, I was seeing a gal who had a friend named Francis, and he was an enormous fan of hardcore punk uh, and the Minneapolis punk scene. And I didn't know anything about either of those genres until, for whatever reason, my girlfriend at the time took me to this guy's house and we spent an evening listening to records. And we listened to The Minutemen and we listened to Black Flag. And fell in love with Black Flag, and then all of a sudden it came to listening to Who's Who Do. Uh, Flip Your Wig was the first album, and then after that, um, Zen Arcade, which was their kind of revolutionary uh, double album. And I just thought, this is an amazing rock and roll band. And within a year and a half, I had an opportunity to see them, and to this day, they're probably, Push Comes to Shove, they're my favorite band. Wow, I actually didn't know. I didn't know they were your favorite. I knew they were like up up there, but I didn't know they were your favorite. Well, it's tough because I really like so many bands, but I think in the end, if I probably had to go out with one band, strumming along, and I was in the mood for a little, you know, hardcore punk, okay. that would be the band. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Cool. I love that. Question two: How many bands have you been in, and what were their names and genres? I put this in here because I know he's been in bands, and I wanted to ask him. Uh, okay, so I've been in three bands. Um, one of them played out once, and the, we played a party, and we were so bad that the guy whose party it was actually shut off the power, so that we would have to close up and go away. That band was called uh, Purple Dog, and then we became the Vietnamese Squash Babies. Nice, I love and that. I did record us, it was just me and a friend, it was just the two of us, and they, we were a lot of fun. We, well, to each other, we were probably a lot of fun. To probably everybody else on the planet, we were awful. Mm -hmm. um, that was a lot of fun. Then the second band was a band that actually <clears throat> played out a few times, and we had like a small little cult following. This was back in college. Um, we got to open up, for example, at the very first Earth Day at the college, and we got to open up for the Whalers, we got to open up for King Missile, so that was, we actually had a few moments, we actually got to go into a studio and record, it That's was cool. kind of exciting. Uh, and that band was the Instruments of Sterilization. Is that the one that you guys had t-shirts for? We did, we actually they had, had merch. They had merch. Didn't you have like a stencil and you like put on the yeah, shirt? Yeah, uh, there were a couple of guys in the band who were very good artists, in fact, one of them continues to this day to be an outstanding artist. And uh, they put together a stencil and they made these shirts and yeah, I have one still somewhere in this house. Um, and to this day there are still people, believe it or not, who remember a couple of our songs. How do you know that? Uh, I, I just encountered something on uh, Facebook recently where people were banding the subject back and forth. Wow. And um, a couple of years ago I met a guy who I didn't know at the time. Uh, who went to the same college, and he said, wait a minute, you were in that band, I remember this song, and he mentioned the song, so that was kind of exciting. And then the third band never played out, um, and it had, I thought it had a ton of promise, 
is a feature of this guy who is now sort of a fairly renowned chef, this guy, Rick Orlando. And we kind of called ourselves jerk pork. This was back in the early 90s, and jerk pork was one of the dishes on the menu. And I just thought it was such a sultry, sick, kind of twisted, little perverse uh, name that it had to be perfect for so a band. Is that your like, band name? Band name, one absolutely. Day. Good to eat, good to play to, play with, whatever you want to know. Yeah. Um, and he had a whole string of songs that were fabulous. Uh, and we played in the basement a few mm. times, but we never got to play out. It and what, were, what was the genre of all these bands? Like, um, there's, like, there's rock and roll? The first band was definitely punk. So our songs were about Reagan, our songs were about... Anti-flag. Very anti-flag, <laughs> yeah. Our songs were about Reagan, our songs were about sort of the dispossessed, I don't know, kind of wandering around, not having much of a purpose in life. The second band was really influenced by the Pixies and King Missile, and we were much more of what was known at the time as sort of um, like college rock radio music, mm -hmm. all right? What would become sort of an underground form of music, I suppose, or, or whatnot. Um, and then the third thing was just, just straight out late 70s rock and roll. Uh, it was, because that's what he was sort of part of, 70s, 80s. And, rock. I don't think you mentioned this, what did you do in all those bands? What was your role? I was the drummer. Yes, yes it was. And we still have a the set down in the basement. It and still goes down I still there. try to play, and I'm as bad now as I was all those years ago. You, you were bad then. Well, I've really heard some bad. recordings. You sound fine. You used to kind of sing a little bit too, like like do like background yeah, vocals uh, a little bit. Sometimes. I, ran, I actually wrote a few of the songs, and so yes. From there. Killing it, killing it. Question three. What is your favorite album of all time? Your ride or die, bury me with this album. If I could only listen to one album that I'd never get sick of, what would it be? I don't think I have a favorite. What's like one of what's one that be on like maybe like your top three, top five? Zen Arcade by Who's Gonna Do would probably be up there. Plastic Surgery Disasters by the Dead Kennedys would probably be up there. Um, Signals and Moving Pictures and Permanent Waves by Rush would probably be up there. Um, I don't know. I like a lot of music, so... So it's hard. Yeah, and, uh, you know what would be up there? This is so embarrassing, but I'll tell you anyway. It would be The Beauty and the Beat by the Go-Go's, which really? is the first ever album I bought, and I still have a very, very Yeah, but spot see, that. that has sentimental value. Like, Huge. I feel like... Yeah. I feel like one of the big reasons A Fever You Can't Sweat Out is mine is because it's... Like, I feel like I've almost or will probably listen to better albums eventually, or like better albums, but that just has like such like, a connection to me that it's like hard to take it down from that sure. number one spot, you know? So the nostalgia is pretty powerful. Yeah, definitely. The fourth question is what is your current favorite album right now? What's been your jam recently? Or even maybe the past year? Uh, recently it's been a lot of psychedelic furs, only because we're going to the show. We're gonna see them guys. I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but we're going to see them in October? Yeah. Early, Early October. October. Yeah. They're coming here. Who, so you put not? together the playlist. Yes, yeah, that And is. that's yeah, my me. workout thing in the morning. And I, I just love it. Get pumped up. I'm kind of ready to add a few more Psych for songs onto that playlist. You can add. Actually, yeah, you can add. And Bash and Pop, really not pleasing. <laughs> yeah, they're opening for them. I thought that'd be so much better. They're really? Just really we might just place. honestly like skip them and just go do like pull pull me with what I did with Bear Tooth and just like skip all openers, just yeah. come in. Yeah. Get there at eight thirty. Yeah. Catch maybe two of their more popular songs at the end. And then and stay then for the yeah. But it it should be so exciting. I'm very excited for that show. But that's the most recent. That's even jam. Makes sense. Yeah. Question number five: <laughs> What is your opinion on the genre of pop punk? So I've been thinking about this question for a little bit, and I have, I think, a legitimate answer that I want to offer you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, recently, I read an article in preparation for a course that I hope to teach that argued that at about the age of 40 or so, something changes in the chemistry in your brain where you're no longer receptive to new sounds. Mm -hmm. You love whatever you've grown up loving, those beats are sort of in that brain somewhere, but anything that's new, the argument goes, hurts, okay? So 
And I've thought a lot about this because you and I went to this pop punk show, I guess. We went to, he went with me to the um, AP, uh, what was it, AP tour 2016. Because at so, that point I couldn't go to the venue by myself, so he had to go with me. So he witnessed, he saw State Champs, Neck State Deep, Champs, Knuckle Puck, Neck and Light Deep, Pacific. Knuckle Puck, like, now Light Pacific, which I think if I had seen when I was a kid, 18, 19, 20, I would have loved them. As bad as I thought they were. They weren't that great live, I have to say that. Uh, I mean, really, just sort of this droning, propulsive... Well, also, I was also the only thing. person in the crowd that was bopping. So, yeah, they I didn't... wasn't bopping. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I would have loved that, though, when I was 20. Mm -hmm. um, I hated that. Yeah. Right? I mean, that actually hurt. Like, thank God I had uh, Ear whatever the earplugs. But, um, Net Deep was so melodic, they were so beautiful that I loved them. So somehow, you know, maybe the article has to make a concession for something like maybe that. Maybe it depends on the genre. It might, you know. but I'm not particularly fond of the whole pop punk you don't, genre. You don't like I certainly don't like the name. You I don't like the name. The name. Is ridiculous. Which I, I think a lot of people, like in your generation now, don't like that that name. Because, it just doesn't make sense. Because you grew up with like what punk really was, so now hearing that term, it's like that goes against everything that people that wanted to be punk. They didn't well, want to be punk. Or not, they wanted to be exact opposite. The argument is that even by '84, '85, when I got into punk, punk was basically dead. That it had already died and had been replaced by a series of other genres that were quite different. Right. Then you have like Blank, Green Day, who was. You well, know, that all comes even much home. later. There, that's like '90s right? and stuff. But um, so I don't know. I, I, I find that the music hurts sometimes, uh, like physically hurts, but I also know deep down that I'm, I really like the fact that you like rock and roll and that you grew out of the whole, you know, the Disney phase the and all that kind of thing. phase, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, I, I find it exciting that you're into the music. I myself can only take it in small doses. Yeah. I mean, I feel that also like within like the past year or so, maybe like more like in the past like three, four months. I veered away. I had like a big pop punk phase, like definitely last year when we saw that show, but also like towards the end of 2016, I was really into pop punk. And I think after the Beartooth show, I am now definitely more into melodic hardcore, which once again is like another sub-genre. I don't know what you want to call these things, like post-hardcore, melodic hardcore, stuff like Trophy Eyes, Beartooth, stuff that has kind of a mixture of screaming, talking, and then just singing in it. So I feel like I, like I, I don't really listen to like state champs that much. You know, I'm not, I feel like I kind of go through these swings and now I'm kind of like, ah, oh, pop punk is okay, so. I have to say though, all champs. the songs and all the music that you listen to, if I absolutely had to choose, I would prefer to listen to Halsey and, what is it, 21 Gun Salute? 21 Pilots? 21 Pilots, right. 21 um, Guns. <laughs> whatever the, the band is, that kind of atmospheric stuff yeah. is really beautiful. Like that doesn't hurt. So no, I I could see you jam into like turnover, very like chill, relaxed. Sure, turnover. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, turnover is a dope jam. They are. I don't know anything about turnover. <laughs> I've played them before, but I feel like I feel like you'd like them. All right. Question number six. What are you, this kind of actually? You've kind of already been talking about this, but I'll just say it again. What are your thoughts or opinion on the music I listen to? Yeah, well, well, like I said, I mean, I, I like the fact that you like what I would consider to be pretty cool music. I suppose that's just rock and roll. It's just yeah, that's the umbrella term. Yeah. <laughs> Alternative. When I think about the kind of the pop stuff that's out there, or really like the pop rap, the pop yeah. hip hop, awesome. uh, the kind of cheesy hip hop Money, dance stuff. Bitches, right. Uh, like, it's so boring. I'm very lyrically driven. So I can't I don't can't even see myself getting into that. Like I it's not that I'm against rap. I just I cringe at those songs because like the lyrics just do nothing for me. Like I I even I have some rap. I listen to some rap, but the rap has to mean something, has to say something or else I just I don't know. I'm I'm lyrically driven when it comes to songs. That's like one of the top things I look for and listen to when I first hear a song of the lyrics. So you've answered the question? All right, then we are coming down to our final question. Question seven. What is one song that reminds you of me? I'm excited to hear your answer for this. Uh, okay, so we were talking about this in the car briefly when I needed you to remind me that the band's name was Kaiser Chiefs, but that's not the song that I'm I predict to write. Yeah, but that's not the song that I'm actually going to go with. Uh, although that was a song that was obviously important because you were uh, just a, a like seven or eight. And I would say if I had to answer this question for you, when they come on, like 
Uh, what's the one? I want to be a dancer. Something about being a dancer. Uh, yes. So that one. Like modern dancer or something. Something like that. about being a dancer. Yeah. That one, and then like um, every day I love you less and less. Yeah. Those remind. Well, those remind me of country. It's always good home. when your daughter tells you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but those every songs, day she loves me less. Mm -hmm. and less. But that song comes on. I'm like, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Anyway, the song that I will go with is Lola by the Kinks. Really? And here's why. When you heard the song as a little pup, you, I don't know, you must have been five or six, you loved it. And it was the first song that was sort of an adult song that you would run around the house just kind of going, Lola, 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 Lola. And it was really, really adorable. So that song will probably forever be etched in my mind with some sort of connection to you. Much like the book Race Riot. I can never, ever think you of Race think Riot, teach about Race Riots or anything else without thinking of you turning this book Race Riot into the alliteration. a conversation. <laughs> yeah, you did like that alliteration. So, at the end, I'm going to go with the King Simone. Cool. Yeah. I definitely, yeah, I, I think that, that that definitely makes sense. That reminds me of being young and singing that and not really knowing, like, I didn't know what it meant. I was just and like, you had no idea Colina. what the song was about. No, I just like the rhymes. Lola, Cola. Yeah, that. of course. It was the fun great little guitar strum. Yeah. It's, it's fabulous. It was all, yeah, it almost reminded me of something you'd sing around like a campfire. Like it kind of, it had like, the instrumentation kind of gave me like, oh, this is like a childlike song. Then he's talking about sure. the girl and stuff. But yeah, that's cool. Well, there you guys go. That was episode two of Music with Friends, Dad Edition, Dulcet Sounds with Dad. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you were a little older and you subscribed to me, like, in your 40s or 50s or something like that. I hope that this was fun, got to hear what someone from your generation thinks about music. Yeah. I mean, I, I know there's an, my, my, you know, there's an age range for the people who watch my videos, so. Also, I just thought you guys enjoyed this the video. Elderly, they watch this? No. All you Weezer dads and all them, you know what I mean? I got to feel like you guys, you guys can relate. He's not a big Weezer fan, though. No, not really. Sorry, sorry Weezer dads. Yeah, sorry at this point. That's like 80% of my fan base. <laughs> I see Weezer well, dads. Well, then we love Weezer. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you like down below. Comment if you want more Music with Friends episodes. I know I have been slacking on that. I need to, you know, get get my friends. We need but... to go. She needs to go to college. <laughs> Just a little busy. I have people I want to do this with, and you guys have actually like recommended people to do this with. I just have to get down to it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already because we're so close to 600 and I post new videos every single Sunday about music. And I'll also leave the link to the playlist below for the rest of my Music with Friends episodes. Like I said, there's only one, but it was fun. So if you want to watch that, that's what's me and my friend that's more my age. But yeah, overall, thank you guys once again for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye. Yeah.